I'm Susan Greenfield, I'm a neuroscientist based at Oxford University. I think what's killed creativity is actually growing up. Because if you think about the process for children, they're always willing to paint, they're willing to ask questions, they challenge dogma because they're not aware of what the dogma is. And it's the same for creativity. Really, the first step is to deconstruct what other people accept. In science, you're always challenging preconceived ideas. For example, even in designing a car um, with the Mini, they challenge the dogma of having the engine in the front. But that's not all. It's not enough just to ask questions. You then have to bring together unusual, unprecedented elements. Why isn't a child's painting automatically qualified to hang in an art gallery, even though they are seemingly being creative? And I think the third stage, which is the hardest one, is that it has to mean something. It actually has to be relevant. It has to make you see the world somehow in a new way, whether it's a book, um, whether it's a painting, whether it's music, whether it's science. You suddenly say, aha, Eureka, now I understand. That's the hardest thing. And I think what kills that final process is the elimination of the first two prerequisites. When you're very young, you're able to do the first two, challenge dogma, bring together unusual elements. But by the time you're grown, by the time you're equipped, to have a meaningful context where you can join up the dots, by then you're too frightened, you're too scared to ask the question in the first place. We lose the potential to be creative. It depends, of course, how you're defining creativity. If you're defining it as the ability and motivation to pick up a paintbrush and draw a picture, that's very different from actually having that picture hang in an art gallery. So if you're talking about the creative process of fulfilling the requirements to eventually be able to do some masterpiece, then sadly I think that is discouraged as one gets older. But it's not as if, ab initio, from the very beginning as a small child, you're automatically gifted with great insights into the human condition. No, but what we do, as I said, there's three processes. We develop the first two, then lose it just at the time when we're getting the third prerequisite.